Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial in the procedural platformer tutorial series. So in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making the um, the world generator a lot more advanced. We're going to set an amplitude, which will um, make it so it, it will set the height on which the blocks can be. So it will kind of clamp the height. So a higher amplitude will allow the blocks to go up a lot higher. So if you set the amplitude to zero, the blocks would be completely flat because it wouldn't be able to go anywhere. But if you set it to like 12 or something, the height will go crazy and it can go really high. But if you set like a lot smaller value, let's say like two, it'll still go up and down. It just can't go up and down as much because there's a high limit to it. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, and we're going to also be setting it so this these values, you can change how spiky the train is. So I also changed the block, the look of the block for the train. I didn't really like the block before. It's just a simple square. If you want the download, uh, it will be in the Google Drive. So if you want that, you can get that. Also, um, huge thanks to AnyKey. Um, he, he was very helpful in um helping me uh come up with a better solution for clamping the um the block so huge thanks to him and all of his uh help he has given me with uh posting on the last tutorial so let's get into it so we're gonna set up our amplitude variable and this is gonna be an integer if we if it was a float, the problem with it is it'll start going in between grid spaces and it'll look super weird. So we're just going to set that as an integer. And we're going to set the minimum value to zero. So you can't go below zero. See, now you can e you can edit it and you can go above. Maybe. Oh, I need to set a maximum value if I do. Okay, never mind. I want that. Just don't go negative. I don't know what that will do. But we'll have to experiment with that. It'll be kind of cool. Okay, so now we have our amplitude. We need to set the minimum and that maximum values for the block height on this amplitude. So what we're going to do is we're going to set on ready variable and we're going to call this min block height equals negative grid size times amplitude and we'll do another on ready variable max block heights equals grid size times amplitude so the only the reason why I did on ready is any I wanted to calculate after actually you probably don't need to do on ready. You could probably just set it right here. And before I had to do on ready, but um, basically what this does is um, it'll set the the minimum and maximum with the grid size in mind, uh, depending on our amplitude. And we'll multiply that. But the reason why I set a negative is if we had these the exact same it would be clamping the exact same values and it won't give it room to um, go in between those values. So you have to set it to negative. So it's uh, below and then the max will be above. So that's why we have to set it to negative. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna set up a function to clamp our position stuff. So I'm gonna do a function clamp, uh, height uh, we'll call it clamp height and we'll just do global position dot y equals clamp and the thing that we're wanting to clamp is the global position that's our value dot y and our minimum we want to set to min block height and our max is max block height so now this just clamps it in between those positions now we need to clamp it whenever we change the position, which in this case is right here and below it, we want to set clamp height. So that's the reason why I set it up as a function is so I'm not copying and pasting the same code everywhere and it just makes it look a lot cleaner. So now we clamp our height. 
and we have our amplitude. So you can actually save this and this should work now. So with an amplitude of zero, oh, also we've set it up now that you, we need to have our position. You already see I have it at zero, zero. Last tutorial I had it at like 45. It needs to be at zero now. Um, or yeah, we'll just put it at zero because I don't actually calculate the initial Y position. I was having issues with that while adding it to the clamp. So we just need it at zero, zero. But the problem is we're not really gonna be able to see it. It's gonna be at the top of the screen. So I can play it now and you'll, you'll see the blocks, but it's gonna be hard to see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a child node. We're gonna set up our camera. We're probably gonna change the camera a bit when we add our player. But for right now, we're just gonna have a camera right here. And for it to transform X position, I set it to 80 right here. What you want to do, though, is you want to set it to half of your width of your window. So right now I have my window width set to 160. So I set it to 80 and it's directly in the center. And what you're also going to want to do is make sure you check current. It's not going to work if you don't. So just make sure that's uh, checked on and now we have our camera. You see, we have the amplitude of zero, so they're kind of just going in like that. If I set the amplitude to, let's say, one, still going to be like that because it's still multiplying the value by one. But if we times it by two, maybe, times it by three, maybe, <laughs> maybe it'll work. Okay, it looks like we have an issue. Let's see what it is. Min block height, max block height. Let's do this on ready. I it's probably not the issue, but I want I want to check and make sure we calculate that on ready. There you go, that was the issue. I need to set it to on ready. So I'm gonna go back here. We have our amplitude set to three. And it's working nicely. So I can, I, what I've done right here is I've actually changed these values. I can't remember what I set the values before, but we're actually going to set this into a variable. So don't worry about um, my change variables, uh, var valuables, uh, variables. Um, we're going to make a new variable to do that. So we're going to call this export integer var. What do we call this? Spikiness? Roughness. It's not how you spell roughness. I think that's how you spell it. Okay, so we're saying roughness. And what this is going to do is we'll just do our roughness value right here, here. And we're going to set that here too and I'm gonna multiply it by two right there and then we're gonna need a max roughness value too so I have to make another export integer var max roughness okay and we're just gonna use that right here max roughness okay so we'll set our roughness let's see five and you can set it to like 20 or something is the max And you can see, depending on our roughness and our max roughness, it will actually be set it up correctly. And maybe we can automatically calculate max roughness. Now we'll just have them in separate variables just for more customizability. I'm just going to have that. But now you can see we have our own terrain generation and you can change it to however you like. You could say grid size to 16, there's gonna be spaces in between every block. That's kind of interesting. Kind of cool though. You could set the four and the blocks will be inside of each other, like that. Oh, you could see where it ends too, that's funny. I'm gonna leave it at eight. And you could set roughness and you could set like 10. But you have to remember, you can only have the roughness value half of the max roughness because it actually gets multiplied by two so the highest roughness we can have is 10 for this max roughness 
which that is super like crazy. And then if you want to even look even higher, you just say your amplitude to like 10, and this is just gonna be making giant mountains all over the screen because there's no like barely any um, uh, limits to where it can go. So that's basically the procedural platforming. We have set it up a more complex system, but now you can actually um, edit it a lot more and make it to your liking. And so I think that would be kind of cool. You can make like a game, like a space game or something where you have, where you land on different planets and you can randomize these variables and kind of create your own like looking train. But this is just the surface of the train generation system. Um, we're going to go more in depth in future tutorials and we're also going to add in a player object. So massive thanks to any key for helping with uh, some of the ideas and helping out with um, giving me um, so, like a uh, look at how I can uh, get this system into the game. So thank you again and thank you you guys for watching this video and um, I'll see you guys in the next video.